Israel. They are not going to Israel. Although, you know, you have uh, cooperation between universities and so on, on an intellectual level, and those people who belong to universities and other education institutions in the West, uh, many of them who have agreed with, with, with the position of the Palestinians are saying, we will not go to Israel, we will not have anything to do with them. We will not go to them even to give a lecture or anything of that sort, right? We will not help them, you know, in, if, you know, the people who have skills in various fields and so on. We will not go to Israel to help them develop in those fields. Even at the university level and so on, we are not going to do that. Uh, and <clears throat> recently, just uh, some days ago, uh, even those people who are in the arts, entertainment, they go there and they do stage performances, dancing, music, and, uh, and so on, right? The Palestinians go to all of them and say, don't go to Israel because you are supporting them. And uh, so some of them have taken that stance. And I don't know, maybe you saw some recent controversies on, the, on this matter because one of them, uh, a dancer, a female dancer and singer and so on, uh, she had some programs planned in Israel and then because of this she said that she will not go. So they, they, they had to cancel those arrangements. And then the, the, the Israelis you know, are speaking bad about her now. <laughs> How come you're taking the side of the Palestinians and so on? So many other musicians and dancers and so on have come to, to Israel. <clears throat> so you can see that while they are trying to, uh, um, you know, get, get whatever they can from the rest of the world, right? Uh, support and so on from the rest of the world, including cor importing corruption into the Holy Land. Although they consider it to be Holy Land, but the dancers, the musicians and everything corrupt, they import into the land. Right? Or, or they generate, they themselves create uh, in the land, all of that corruption. But at the same time, all of these things are bringing awareness to people of the corruption that they are causing and that the problems are there in the world because of that. And a lot of the terrorism that is there in the world because of that situation. Right? <clears throat> so it needs a, you know, a long discussion uh, deep understanding and so on. And inshallah, we are trying to plan programs with different brothers speaking on the topic. Uh, uh, hopefully, inshallah, we'll be able to get that. We have to identify uh, people who are knowledgeable about uh, the entire situation, the history of Bani Israel, the history of the land, you know, what is uh, the, uh, the currency, how it is that uh, the State of Israel was uh, able to be established. Uh, what is the current situation and so on, so that we as a Muslim community, we become fully aware of it uh, and uh, we don't remain, we should not remain aloof, just uh, as if we are impartial, you know, uh, there are many, in fact, there are many Jews, you know, who have taken their position, they don't want to support Israel because they know the corruption that uh, Israel is causing there, but at the same time they will not uh, voice anything against Israel, the Jews like that, right? Who are not going to say anything about, against Israel. So they remain silent, they still take a neutral position. We as Muslims should not take a neutral position because we know there's a clear wrong, clear injustice that has been done there. So we have to take a stance. There are other Jews who have taken that stance also and they are speaking out against Israel. And not because of the BDS movement, but long before that, in fact, from the time of the formation of Israel, when the Zionist movement was going around trying to propagate among the Jews, you know, come uh, migrate to the land so that we can form the sta a new state, a state of Israel as a, a Jewish state. Many of them said no. We are not going to do that. This is wrong. This is completely wrong. It is against the Torah for us to do that. For, for us to re-migrate to that land and to establish a state there. Why? Because God has dispersed us from the land and we are not supposed to go back. It is the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, the dispersal, dispersal of the Jews away from the land this is by the decree of God. This is what they believe in, right? 
the decree of God and we cannot go back to that land. The only time we will be allowed to go back to that land is when the Messiah comes. You know, they are still waiting for the Messiah to come, right? When the Messiah comes, then he will take them back to that land. And in the history, there are many people who came, arose among them and claimed to be the Messiah. And they started to follow him until eventually he, is, he dies. His, his uh, movement fails. They are not able to go back to the promised land. And so they know that he was fa false messiah, he was not the true messiah. And it happened over and over in history, including during the Ottoman time when the Uthmani uh, Khilafah was there. Jews within the Khilafah, within, you know, the, uh, who were there on the Ottoman rule, the Uthmani rule, right? One of them claimed to be the messiah. And other Jews started to follow him and he said he's going to take them to the promised land. And he was going and so on, the entire movement was crushed uh, by the Uthmani, by the rulers, right? It was crushed by them. So, <clears throat> it's a long history, but it's very, very important for us because we are in these times. And we cannot remain neutral. Remaining neutral mean, means that you allow Israel to continue doing its wrong. What can we do? Th those are things that we have to discuss and come up with strategies, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us to We spent a long time. <laughs> uh, just one or two questions, quick questions, if there are any. Okay, alhamdulillah, there are none. Subhanaka Allahumma, wa bihamdika, and ashadu wa la ilaha illa ilaha illa ilaha illa ilaha illa ilaha illa ilaha illa plan to go to Mecca and Medina, but going to Quds is never on Muslims' minds, which is one of the places that is we're supposed to, the three places, right? Um, so any emphasis on that? I think uh, many Palestinians, and, uh, and especially perhaps those who are behind the BDS movement, boycott, divest, and sanction, that you should not visit, because you have to pass through, of course, Israel, you know, you have to have uh, get a, a approval from them. Visa maybe, I, I, I don't know. Um, actually, they don't stamp the visa in, in your passport because they know that it is going to be problematic for you if you go to other places, right? Uh, so they will not stamp the passport in uh, uh, your passport itself. Uh, they will uh, uh, give you a paper that you keep in your passport as long as you are over there. And that, of course, you will remove your throw away when, when you leave the place. But you know, that is to show that you you have uh, uh, you have officially you know entered into the place. Of course, it is there. I mean, they are in control. Uh, so, in some ways, uh, you are promoting the, their control over the place by going there. This is the position of uh, some Palestinians, and maybe especially those who are behind the BDS movement. Uh, but there are others, uh, well, not Palestinian, but Muslims generally, there, there are those who, uh, including uh, Palestinians, uh, who want visitors to come to see their conditions, their condition, uh, to know exactly what they are going through, uh, so that you can go back and tell the rest of the world, you know, and, uh, uh, and try to gain support and so on for them, right? So there is that other way of looking at it. You come there, see how the Palestinians are living, uh, the restrictions that the Israel, Israel has placed upon them and so on, understand the situation so you can go back and be like an ambassador for them and speak about the difficulties and try to change the situation. The end result will be the same, right? To try to change that situation, to remove this oppressiveness uh, of the Israeli state over them, the Jewish state over them, and so on, right? Uh, but but the, the ways of doing it, two different methods that are sort of conflicting with each other. Go there, some saying yes, it's okay to go, others are saying no, don't go, because in a way you're supporting the, Isra the Israeli establishment. So, two positions, and we cannot you know, Islamically, we, we cannot say that one is haram and the other is okay. How can we say that, right? It's haram to do, it, haram to visit. We cannot, right? Uh, and 
uh, there are many who have gone, many scholars who have gone, and there are scholars who are going, who are, you know, always, we hear of them now, you know, preparing groups, uh, encouraging people to go along with them so that they can see the place and, you know, understand the, the connection that we as Muslims have with the place and, and with the people, uh, understanding the plight of the people and so on, right? But having a connection, we should have a connection with the place, an Islamic connection with the place, and we should understand the plight of the people and therefore let us go. And there are, there, there are some of them, there, there is one of them, uh, for example, uh, a brother by the name of, a sheikh by the name of Abdullah Hakim Quick. Abdullah Hakim Quick. I don't know if you've heard that name. But uh, last year, he, uh, last year I think, yes, uh, he came into this area. Uh, Al Maghrib, you know, you've heard of Al Maghrib uh, Institute, right? The, the programs that they have. And many of their programs are held now at uh, Mashir Wali. In this year, whenever they come to New Jersey, they have it at uh, Mashir Wali. Uh, so this brother was, was here, uh, and he is a historian. He's you know, a graduate from Medina very long ago. He graduated, so he's old in age now. Uh, but whenever he can travel, he travels. <laughs> And so he, um, uh, as a historian, uh, there, there's a book that he wrote, um, uh, uh, which is um, Deeper Roots. <coughs> I don't know if you know the, the, the book Roots. Anybody knows the book Roots? That was a book, yes. like the Roots? Roots. The root, roots. That was about the slave. Um, yeah, somebody slave. from, uh, uh, yeah. who, who uh, a descendant of the slave, the Afri oh, African yeah. slave, right? Uh, you know that, and that was made into a, a, movie. a movie and so on, right? Uh, well, uh, of course, he's not the author, but he wrote Deeper Roots, a book. You know, just uh, sort of copying the name, but he named it Deeper Roots to show that even before the Africans were, Africans were brought here as slaves, there were people from Africa who came here. Muslims, and maybe not Muslims also, there are others who say, Others who are Afrocentric, Afrocentric, they are not necessarily Muslims, uh, but they try to promote uh, the Africans and the descendants of the Africans, right? So they are more Afrocentric, and they talk about that. Uh, they talk about the Africans coming to, to the Americas before Columbus, but this brother Abdullah Hakim Quick, uh, in his studies, he has shown that. Muslims, and of course not, so it's not exclusively Muslims, but Muslims came from Africa to this part of the world before Columbus. There's evidence of that, right? Uh, and uh, also uh, during, of course, during the slave trade, many Muslims came like that as slaves. Uh, <clears throat> so um, he uh, goes to various places. Uh, he went to Spain, he was to Spain, he had several trips to Spain in order to study the Islamic civilization that was there in Spain, Andalusia. And he, uh, I think he is organizing or he has organized well, some trips also to Jerusalem. He's gone to Jerusalem right, to, you know, to look at the history of the place. Apart from the connection that we need to establish and the situation with the Palestinians we need to understand and so on. You know, all of that is included, but also as a historian, a Muslim historian, he goes there to look at the, uh, you know, the, 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 the Muslim presence uh, in Jerusalem and you know, understand the history and so on behind it. Sometimes you have, as a historian, you need to visit these places to uh, you know, understand it firsthand, you know, what it is that, uh, that happened. So, uh, Muslims who are going for that purpose uh, and, and Maghrib is also taking groups of people, students, groups of their students, who wish, whoever wishes to go there in order to study the place and to understand it and understand the Islamic roots uh, that are there and why it is that Al Masjid al Aqsa is the third holiest you know, place uh, for Muslims and so on. Uh, so there are many Muslims scholars and so on have taken the position that it is okay to go there for these reasons. You're not supporting Israel if you can avoid uh, 
anything to do with buying from the Jews. Avoid going to their hotels, avoid buying things, buying food and other things from them and so on. You go to the Palestinians, stay with the Palestinian, buy food from the Palestinians and so on, just to support them. Right? So this is the position they have taken. So these are all valid positions. You can't say one or the other is wrong. So if somebody wishes to go, alhamdulillah, you know, if you have an American passport, you can go there very easily. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it uh, uh, liberate the place for us, <laughs> for the Muslims, for future generations. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubi.